Hi, this is Book Circle Online. I'm Jeffrey Masters, and here I'm with Ken Baker. You know him from E! News, live from E! And today we're talking about his new book called The Late Bloomer. Stay tuned. This is Book Circle Online, featuring in-depth discussion, insight, news, and commentary on all the world's leading book titles and their authors. And now, Book Circle Online. Hi, Ken. <laughs> Welcome to our show. I say I love the voice intro. Yeah, it's that's like not very, me. Very uh, studious and academic sounding. It's about like three octaves lower than mine. Yeah, but I thought maybe you could do voiceover work. No, 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 no. It's like what I strive to be, but uh, <laughs> it's not. Um, so yeah, we're talking about your new book. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. You're welcome. You read the whole thing. I read the whole thing. Okay, I was kind of hoping you didn't, because now you're going to ask so many questions. I was like, he well, knows too much. Well, if I didn't Knowledge finish it, you would still have, like, the tumor, and I'd be asking about that. Yeah, so, no, so it's a, you know, there's a, there's a happy ending, if you call this happy. Um, yeah, oh my <laughs> no, god. it's good. I'm, I'm so blessed, but... Of course. Yeah. It's, a, it's a, like, a wild story. Yeah, I, you know, the, the interesting thing about this book is that, uh, full disclosure, I wrote this in 99 and 2000. Okay. And it was published in 2001. Um, and if you didn't hear about it, join the club. Uh, not a lot of people heard about it. And uh, though it was at the time, it got some publicity. I was on uh, Oprah and oh, really? Dateline and stuff. But uh, most of people watching this probably weren't alive back then. Uh, I, was, I wasn't. Uh, I was you know, not. I'm very young. I was actually, I wrote this when I was eight years old. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so I'm in my late 20s now. And I read it when I was 18. Yes, of course, of course. Uh, so... Uh, you know, so the book came out then and then it kind of went away, but um, it, it's resurfacing because uh, and we re-released it with a new chapter and some new stuff that I've put in there and uh, a new cover <laughs> that because of the movie. And this is the movie. It's a movie, special movie edition. So I'm here talking about the wild yeah, story and I yeah. never really thought I would be. Oh, funny. Uh, but now I am. And uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, and just for like everyone who doesn't know, you had a small tumor. We'll give like the brief synopsis, and it yeah. caused you to release I don't know if prolactin. It was small. Um, How big? I guess no tumor. It was is the that size small. of a, no. It was the size of a chestnut, which may not sound big, like because you hear about people with like grapefruit size tumors in their stomach, but it was a few inches behind my eyes at the base of my brain. There's not a lot of room there, so it was actually okay. what's considered a macro tumor. And it was resting on my pituitary gland, which controls all the hormone function in your body. I did not know that. Um, as you re read in the book, when I was told I had this tumor, I and it was on my pituitary gland, I literally was like, is that in my armpit or is that yeah. in my hip? Like, I had no idea. And I know a lot about the pituitary gland now. And um, yeah, it was uh, a pretty huge diagnosis that changed my life for the better. Had you even heard of prolactin before that? No. Okay. Um, so I sit down and this was, uh, I was, uh, 27. So it was like a year ago. Uh, no, this is like, when was this? I mean, I guess we're going back to 1997 and I was dying. 97. Yeah. And I was, uh, go to the off the doctor's office cause I was having bad headaches. I had no energy and I had pretty much like no sex drive. And, uh, uh, you know, it was a real miserable time. I was depressed and just down and I stopped playing you know, all the sports and I was an athlete. I'd gone to Colgate University on a hockey scholarship and I was didn't even exercise anymore. I mean, I was like, I had no energy whatsoever. Um, and I finally went to a doctor. I was in denial for a long time and I go to the doctor in Beverly Hills and I do my physical. He takes my blood and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, I have these really bad sinus headaches. And, you know, he was asking me some questions and I answered them. A couple days later, I get a call at my office, and at the time, I worked for People Magazine as a correspondent, and I was, you know, I was busy. And the nurse calls and was like, uh, "Dr. Tribulus would like you to come in and talk about your results." And being the idiot that I was, uh, or some people might still say am, <laughs> I said, "You know, I'm really busy, so can we just do it on the phone?" And she said, "What you never want to hear," which is. No, he really wants you to come in and talk about it. So I'm like, okay, I'll be right in. So I drove over to Beverly Hills and I sit down and the doctor puts in front of me a piece of paper and it was my lab results. And on one side was the normal level of prolactin, which I'd never heard of. It says, turns out it's a uh, hormone that women secrete to produce breast milk when mm -hmm. they're lactating. Men have trace amounts. Turns out that men have like a level of five. So... 
I take it you're a normally healthy, functioning male. As far as I know. So it's probably about five. Um, mine right now is about five as well. Um, so we're hormonally um, stable. Yeah. Um, so the doctor says, uh, here's normal, five. Here's yours. And I look and he'd highlighted it. And it said 1,600 approximately. I was like, 1,600 and five is normal. Is that bad? And he's like, well, if you're pregnant and a woman, it would probably be like 150. And so began this awakening. Um, I quickly got medication that normalized me and then had surgery to have it removed. And this kind of, I had this like, almost like puberty experience that was incredibly bizarre and exhilarating and scary and just a shock to my system. And that's soon after that I started writing because it was such a profound transformation that I went through. Do I mean, do you, did you feel like a different like person just like operating in the world? Yeah, totally. Because the thing to understand is I feel like a scientist, Dr. Baker, <laughs> um, the more prolactin you have in your body, the less testosterone. Mm -hmm. It's an inverse relationship. So as I got older and it turns out that they had, diagnosed me as probably having it since at least, you know, my early teens, maybe even younger. Wow. But it, I was able to kind of start puberty and, you know, I mean, I wasn't like a little boy, you know, I wasn't like Benjamin Button kind of thing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was like, no, I was, you know, I mean, I was competing at the junior Olympic level in hockey and I was, you know, I had girlfriends and I'd lost my virginity kind of, it was a disaster. I tell it in the book. Right. It's fun. Uh, not, that's a joke. It was incredibly uh, nerve wracking and awful. But uh, so I, as I got older, by the time I was in college, I was getting really messed up because my prolactin level was creeping up. And, and as I tell in the book, instead of having chapter numbers, I basically say what my prolactin level was as I went through this experience, mm -hmm. unbeknownst to me, because I had no idea what was wrong with me. So when I got that diagnosis at the doctor, I was like, great. I have an answer to why I've been feeling this way and felt like a freak. Yeah. It was like an actual illness. I had thought like maybe I was going crazy. I had hangups. I was neurotic. No, I was sick biologically. I mean, I'm surprised that you never went to a doctor before to ask. I did. So, well, but, but well, yeah, was, are you saying the New York doctor? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I'd been to like psychologists and I'd been to, when I was in college, and this is, I don't hope it's not like this, but when you're a varsity athlete, yeah. they would just be like, oh, come in, hit your knee with a hammer, you know, check your heart rate, yeah. whatever, yeah, blood pressure, it's all good. So I was like, I'm healthy. And, uh, but in that really critical time when I kind of, when I was like just starting off, I was in graduate school at Columbia, I was working at newspapers, making no money and really wasn't taking care of myself. I really, I went to a doctor once because I was like, I have really bad sinus headaches. I, and he's just like, oh, here's Claritin. Um, and so I wasn't really telling him that it was like, you know, it's really hard for me to get an erection and like, I really feel messed up. And oh, by the way, I went running the other day and I had like white pus coming out of yeah. my nipples. Didn't mention that. Uh, I was embarrassed, you know, I was kind of like, oh, I don't want to talk about it. And it's weird. Maybe your body's. And I, I get the embarrassment, but for me, like you found out that you were like, actually like you were lactating, right? Well, or like those, that was like milk. Yeah. Am I reading into that? Yeah. No, I mean, it's kind of, um, I just think if that was happening to me, I would go to the doctor and be like, yeah. hey. Well, if it was happening today, I would, yeah. I think it was, you know, anyone who's had, first of all, like I, I have a long history of being the opposite of a hypochondriac where I don't want to acknowledge illness. Um, I'm not really like that anymore, but that's what I was like. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. So my book in a lot of ways is sort of a real examination inside the mind of someone who really doesn't want to be sick and thinks they can somehow not think about it and pretend it's not happening. Yeah. I, was, I had so many walls of denial uh, that were built up and that sort of explains why. Now, the first time that I actually felt like, or I actually had like a discharge, like around my nipple, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's weird to say that, um, was uh, I ran a marathon because I was like, you know, I just need to get healthy and I gotta, you know, I'll feel more energy if I just expend more energy. And, and so I ran a marathon. I was living in Washington, D.C. at the time. I was working for ABC News. I was like a desk assistant. And my buddies who I lived in an apartment with, they all were like, let's run the marathon. So we trained, ran the marathon, and uh, my nipples were so sore, like, like so sore. 
and like rubbing against the shirt and everything and like I just was like I get across the finish line and like my whole body hurts at the time but I remember feeling oh my god it hurts so bad you know ladies I know the feeling like when you uh, are a certain time of month a little swollen I get it um I literally like had this impulse to like squeeze it out because it was like yeah. pressure you know like if you have like a something like a boil or like an ingrown yeah pimple or something it's like you're kind of like oh i gotta get this like that's what it felt like and lo and behold some like milky kind of fluid came out that's bizarre yeah but, but my my reaction was not oh, i have to go to a doctor and find out what this is or uh this is not normal this could be a tumor this could be like my hormones out of whack it was I'm not running a marathon again. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't thinking clearly. Yeah. I was really didn't want to yeah. deal with it. I mean, when you say, put it in terms of like hypochondria and being mm -hmm. the opposite of that, that yeah. kind of makes perfect sense. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, it's a little bit of a... Yeah, it is. I, That's kind of what it is. Because also, like, I think it reading into it could have justified... Um, like in terms of sex drive, like feeling that way, um, that it's not a large problem because your father was such like a sexualized person. Yeah. It would make sense to like reject that and go the opposite direction. That's where I was going with it. I mean, I just thought like, I remember just, I grew up around like my brothers uh, who are all awesome. I have four brothers and um, they weren't always awesome, but they are now. They're great guys. And two of them older, two of them are, are three older, one younger. And my older brothers, like two of my older brothers, as I tell in the book a lot, it's like basically I got a sex education by just growing up around these guys. They right. were like sex crazed lunatics. And the stuff I saw, I mean, I, there's a scene I tell, um, like, you know, so a lot of this is about like, you know, growing up and developing your sexual identity. Yeah. Like a lot of this book is really about that. Um, and then getting very confused about it because of your hormones being out of whack and just saying like, well, what, 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 what's going on? I don't feel like everyone else. And I think that's something a lot of people can relate to uh, for different reasons. Um, but I definitely felt like, you know, my dad, he died when I was in my early twenties and that was when my illness was getting really bad undiagnosed mm -hmm. and so i was thinking more like i'm just like a psychological mess you know um have like intimacy issues or so i had justified all these things but it really wasn't the case it was my body was at war with itself yeah um, and that is what the condition was doing to me yeah and a lot of it kind of was summed up by like you didn't feel like stereotypically manly yeah but it's also interesting to me that you didn't feel manly and yet it's like the historically masculine traits of machismo and like mm -hmm. forcing confidence that yeah. allow that did not allow you to tell anybody about it yeah it's like feeling manly but like you're not feeling unmanly but feeling manly enough not yeah. to tell anybody about it and you also have to understand too like i i mean i'm older than you uh <laughs> breaking news um i um I, I grew up in a different time, you know? I mean, yeah. I was, like, in high school, in junior high school, middle school, like, in the 80s, and and it, it, it was a real time of repression, and, you know, there was no, like, let's celebrate Caitlyn Jenner on the cover of Sports Illustrated. That was not happening, trust me. Um, and the gender stereotypes of what you're supposed to be and blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. And, you know, I mean, I was always and have always been you know, heterosexual and attracted to women, but uh, there comes a time when you're just like, when your body is like completely not wired and biochemically stirred the way it's meant to be, I guess, yeah. uh, that you get confused. And, uh, you know, like I tell a scene in the book, there was a guy, great guy, who worked, uh, I worked with, and uh, I was uh, right out of college and, you know, he was just being really nice and, um, and then like we used to go golfing and then like one day like we're in his apartment I'm like oh wait he's like wants something else to happen right. and it like it, and I realized I was like of course he thinks that I never like have girls I never like talk about like oh look how hot Eileen is over there on the desk like I wasn't like the normal straight guy yeah. behavior thing so he probably was like oh you know like, da, da, da. I'm like and I was like oh my god like what is my problem you know, like kind yeah. of thing, like beating myself up. Ugh. I mean, did you ever? You, a lot of the big problem was like sexual desire. Did you ever think like it is that it's when you with don't have women? sexual desire? Yeah, uh, it opens up. Like I, <laughs> the, the funny thing was before I got so debilitated with headaches and energy, low energy levels. Yeah, if you don't have testosterone. 
you I mean, that's a fuel yeah. for your life, you know, not just sexually. But, uh, and like whatever your definition of masculinity is, sexual desire is just a clear indicator for overall health. Sure. In general. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, um, yeah, I mean, they say, uh, they tell men like, uh, you know, if you're, uh, this isn't the medical term, but uh, if your wiener ain't working, something's not working. Yeah. Like in other words, it's like there's something wrong. Yeah. You, you have low blood pressure, you have like, you know, you might have some other metabolic issue, you could have hormonal imbalances, yeah. you could, there's a lot of things that can go on. It's sort of like, it's a, it's a, it's like a, th a little thermometer, a little yeah. gauge that tells you what's going on. I um, mean, did you ever consider like, is it because I'm not attracted to like women? Did you, did you like sit no, down and think I was. about I it? I had girlfriends. I, you know, I dated in high school and college, you know, I go up yeah. and it's always uncomfortable. I was afraid. And then I realized it was like, I'm not like really getting turned on, you know, yeah. it's like, you know, now being on the flip side of it, like I get healthy and I tell that in the book, it's like yeah. knowing like, oh wait, now that I am really feel desirous and like yeah. have sexual impulses and desires, it's like, oh my God, I really was sick because everything was different. Yeah. Everything just switched over. Um, and during that dark time, it was really like being a prisoner of my own body yeah. and uh, I would have dreams like nightmares about being literally like stuck in like you know boxes and and uh, I developed like claustrophobias because wow. like I it was like a representation of all this feeling of being stuck in this body oh you didn't write that in the book or the on. dreams I don't um, think I uh, maybe you did <laughs> I think I mentioned oh. you know that you know I had some you know, yeah, some vivid dreams. That's just things. fascinating, like the subconscious yeah. being like, hey, like, yeah. what, something's wrong. Yeah, I mean, I learned a lot about myself in that process and um, frankly continue to do. Honestly, we have an audiobook version of the book and um, this is the first time because we didn't on the original release and I had to read it a couple months ago and it was a really profound experience because, you know, obviously I had to reread it and write some new things, a new chapter for the book, but um, just kind of an update on my life. Yeah. And, um, but um, I, it was really uh, profound to speak my truth in that way. The audiobook, I mean, I want people to, if they enjoy reading, like read the book, obviously, but the audiobook to me is a very personal uh, it's it's a much more intimate at least i felt that way because here i am hmm. telling you these really deeply personal things like all my like my sexual experiences and sexual failures and yeah. da, 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 and then i get healthy and it's like i'm like nutty and <laughs> like just like the worst human being in a way were you surprised um, how personal it was because it's been 15 years yeah i mean I mean, I kind of freaked out a little bit, actually, because a year ago, I learned that the movie would finally get made, and Penguin wanted to re-release the book, and then it hit me, oh, shoot, this is going to come out, i got to deal with this, because when the book came out originally, like, I mean, not that I'm like a household name or something, but I have a profile, I'm on TV every day, I've yeah. been for years, and I, I've known for writing, I've written eight books, and so I... Back then, I was just this writer guy at a magazine. No one knew who I was, really. And so, and I'm a, I'm a father now, which layers in this whole other thing. So I was like, oh, I got to talk about my penis again. You know, like, I was like, I don't know if I'm up for this. But it's been really healthy for me because I realized that what I'm really talking about is not, you know, my penis. <laughs> yeah. I'm really talking about what it means to be a man versus what it means to be male and what I learned by not being fully biochemically male as I was meant to be what I learned about what it means to be a man because when I got healthy uh, I was like I'm a man no da, da, da. like I can have sex with you 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 and oh poor girlfriend sorry I gotta go and do this stuff um, that's not very manly to me my definition of it today yeah that's like very male that's like and that's easy it's so easy to be male like Oh, I'm mad, blah, 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 blah. you know, I'm horny, uh, you know, like that's very male caveman. We're human beings. We have a humanity. We have a soul. And as I say in the book, what I've learned through this whole process is that maleness, maleness, I have low prolactin, I have high testosterone, whatever. That's a shell. Mm -hmm. 
but manhood is your soul and it's 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 a much more complex thing and i think that men heterosexual homosexual whatever every man knows what i'm talking about of that conflict between those two forces inside of you and and learning to be a man in today's culture and what that means and it's a kind of a complex thing you know because you are this genetically programmed guy to be like a guy and be male and blah 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 but like being a man is a very nuanced complex thing these days in in modern world and with relationships and um so my story is just what i've learned by going into an extreme place what i've learned about the everyday experience of, of being a man of of uh being in love and, and trying to navigate and negotiate relationships and um, I think that's the value of the story. Yeah. Not like, hey, this is what it's like to lactate. I mean, it's in there if you want to learn. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think it's that, definitely there. Yeah. I think like society has done so much work the last couple of years of like redefining what it means to be a woman. Mm -hmm. And we've not been so specific about ma like manhood. Sure. Yeah. In fact, um, I do think that. Well, first of all, um, if you believe in these things, and I do. In what um, things? Um, that there's a such thing as um, uh, the, you know, our path to enlightenment and enlightened beings. And um, I actually went to a retreat with Deepak Chopra, and I learned a ton of stuff. I learned this great meditation technique that he has called primordial meditation. I had a lot of insights into just the human condition and how to connect with the force in the world of God. and. Um, and women are the divine feminine. Um, women are actually closer to being fully actualized beings than men. Um, and why uh, is that? I think because they are the givers of life and the nurturers of life, and they're more in touch with themselves. And um, and and that's something that, for me. I went through this experience of having this female hormone and uh, came back from it, back to normal. And, uh, but that lives with me every day. And by the way, I still have part of the tumor in my head right now. I take medication twice a week so it doesn't grow back. If I don't take it, within a year or two, my levels will be really high because it's happened. They tried to get me off it uh, several years ago and it failed and uh, my levels of prolactin spiked back up so this is something that i deal with and uh you know i've come to peace with but it's a reminder that this is all a very delicate balance you might think you're healthy and everything's going good but it's all very delicate um, pharmaceutical companies get a bad rap sometimes for really good reason yeah. in my case uh i don't know what i would do without it i mean i would be a mess. I mean, ultimately you die because the tumor would regrow and uh, I would get a stroke or there just felt bad things that would happen. Wow. Yeah. So I'm very lucky. It's something I live with. I'm, this isn't wood. Um, it's glass. <laughs> yeah. Let's pretend it's wood. But, you know, I feel very fortunate. I mean, I have, I, I, you know, I've been able to, you know, have an incredible, you know, family life and, and to, I ended up, after I wrote this book uh, many years ago, I went and played professional hockey because that was like unfinished business. Um, I've been able to have this wonderful career in, in Hollywood, and magazines, and television. And, and uh, so I'm very blessed. Like, this isn't like a woe is me sad no. story at all. I, I think it's an amazing example of like the funny guy on TV, funny as in entertaining, not like mm -hmm. funny looking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, some people might beg to differ. Um, <laughs> I had someone, um, I was on CNN recently, and uh, and sometimes viewers and fans and stuff, they're so creative and they think of stuff. Um, they tweeted me, like literally, I think I was still on the air, and this fan tweeted a side-by-side -side picture pictures of me and Beaker from The Muppet Show. Um, he, has no, he has no chin. <laughs> well, he has, he has like eyes and a uh, head like mine, so... Anyway, that's very funny, funny. <laughs> <laughs> um but it's like a great example that this guy they see yeah. on tv you have like no idea what he's been through or like yeah. what anybody's like dealing with right now but do we really know what anyone's dealing with like on the way over here today uh yeah, i'm covering this story for e right now brad pitt uh he's under investigation for child abuse and all these nasty allegations 
um, wait a second, I thought like a week ago we thought they were perfect. Yeah. Um, you don't know what's going on and, unless someone reveals it. And I think all of us, this is what I love about memoir in general as a genre of book, is uh, it just really, I think, people read memoir for the same reason that I always said people follow celebrities. They're not, they don't care so much about the celebrities. They're kind of trying to learn about themselves. And it's really a mirror up to ourselves. If you, Because we all share so much more than we are different. And when someone like myself um, puts it all out there, and this is unflinchingly honest. Yeah. This is like, I mean, I am shocked at the, what I reveal in here. But it's very therapeutic to do that. But I think when you do that, people relate to you and connect with it because we're all so con like we share a lot of the common the struggles the hopes the dreams like we all sort of want the same things and i really think that when someone comes along and puts their story out there that people overwhelmingly will connect and relate to you and it's ultimately very positive it's been a very positive thing for me yeah i'm sure there's people who are like read it or read about it and be like Oh, and then see the movie and just be like, wow, Ken Baker, he's kind of a freak. <laughs> like, I always thought he was just like this other kind of guy, but like, he has this whole like freaky side. It's like, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm a human being. Like, we're all freaks. I'm just like telling you that I am, but you don't have to. It's okay. I mean, is it weird that we just met today and I know so many like personal details? Tell me something. About your life? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, Tell me something like that you think is like, wait, I shouldn't know that. Um, you... You mentioned how big your dick is. <laughs> <laughs> he went there. Is that a good um, answer? Well, there, there was. Um, <laughs> I forget what I said in there, but I I remember, like I was writing about, you know, like when you're of a certain age, because you know I was not, um, I wasn't sick. Sick. I was. I had the condition that I have, which is called hyperprolactinemia. Uh, where my body overproduces at a hyper level prolactin. And so, uh, but it wasn't really impacting me till mu like later teens, 20s, really bad mid 20s, like yeah. near suicidal, as we learn. And um, uh, so, you know, you're at an age, you're a kid, you're like 14, 15, you're all like, I'm gonna see how big this is. You pull out the ruler, <laughs> you know, it's like, but that's, you know, these rites of passage of being uh, growing up as a male in our society, yeah. and you're exposed to more than ever. Like, look at, you know, I work in Hollywood, you work in Hollywood. Um, you know, we, we, justifiably, we hear a lot about the images and the archetypes of women and females in movies, right? So I had the experience of going into the theater to see uh, Bad Moms recently, which is an awesome movie. And, uh, but I looked around and I was literally, there were probably, I don't know, a hundred people in the theater. It was me and some other poor guy who was dragged to this. So I'm in, yeah. I'm seeing bad moms and all the men in the movie were like dolts. They were just like, so like one dimensional and like, just like foil they were just kind of the butt of jokes and things like yeah. that and i thought oh wait that's how women must feel about most movies in modern you know like big budget cinema it's like the women are completely like just cartoon characters usually and not fully developed and this yeah. was the flip-flop but at the same time i was thinking well what are the images of manhood in pop culture like let's take uh, movies for example uh, if I'm a young guy trying to figure out where I fit in the world. Uh, let's see, we got all these ridiculous superhero movies. So I need right. pecs and abs and broad shoulders and I need to like save the world. And it's like, well, that's a, that's a lot of pressure for the average guy. You know, they look in the mirror and they're like, oh, that's not me. Right. And then the other example is like the Phil Dumphy in Modern Family who can't tie his own shoes. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, well, well, I'm not either of these I'm things. sort of like that. But, but, and also <laughs> what? Seth Rogen? Yeah. And his brand of humor and guys where it's like, let's smoke weed and like have chicks and, you know, the, you know, neighbors, hey, you know, the sorority. It's like, it, like, that's all part of the male experience, but it's all very just, it's in what I love about what they did with the late bloomer movie is that you get a really more nuanced look at manhood and what it means and the pressures because we know a lot about the pressures that women face and they're daunting uh, the image to be to look perfect and the, you know them injecting their lips and doing these things and and it's it's horrible yeah. you know but there's like this like more silent killer of men going on where men feel like 
they don't acknowledge it because we often don't, but they feel their own pressures. And I yeah. felt the pressures very acutely because I was struggling with my hormones. Um, but it's something that men deal with some, every man deals with to some extent. Yeah. And I like that you didn't ignore like themes around male body image issues, like mm -hmm. saying that Huge at some thing. points you were eating a thousand calories a day. Yeah. Like nothing. Yeah. Uh, but what had happened was, you know, I couldn't metabolize anything. I had no energy, you know? So how am I going to burn anything? Like, and, and I would just feel so gelatinous and you know, I wasn't the buff man I am today. That's a joke. Um, <laughs> but I was, you know, I was a different body type. It was, it was very uh, frustrating. Yeah. You know? And, and uh, but you know, a lot of guys feel that way and they don't have a hormonal problem. They are just, that's their biology. And I think that, you know, we all, men or women, you know, this book is really about one man's relationship with his body. And the first line in the book is, my body was at war with itself. Mm -hmm. And that really sums up. But the last line in the book is, I am a man made of the experience of my life. So we all are born in these shells, these bodies, and we live, we go on our journey. But at the end of the day, we are made up of the experiences and we get to choose how we react to them, how we process them and what we do with our bodies. And, uh, and this is a real deep exploration of my journey that I can't express by, uh, you know, being in the E newsroom, you know, <laughs> like, you know, yeah. now up to the newsroom, Ken, how's your manhood today? You know, yeah. uh, this is, I, so I really appreciate the outlet of books and the platform. And I'm drawn to that because it's a way to have a lot more depth and, and tell a story in a real deep, meaningful way. I love that. I think that's such a great place to uh, end it off on. Cut me off. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. Thank I you. I thought you might end your kicker yeah. with the how big my penis was. No, like, they have to get like... the book for that. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. We're not telling you because you yeah. have to read it. Um, no. <laughs> that's in the movie, too. Yeah. Um, no, if anybody wants to like connect with you online, send them to your Twitter. Yeah, Twitter's good. Uh, Ken Baker now. Uh, that's it. yeah. The Twitter's a great place to reach me. They can and, ask uh, you how big it is there. <laughs> no, they have to read the oh, book. Oh, read the they book. Just kidding. <laughs> um, awesome. You're at Ken Baker now. Yeah. I'm at Jeff Masters One. And of course, you can find all of our previous interviews on iTunes, YouTube, and BookCircleOnline.com. We'll see you next week. Bye. From managing editor Jason Squamata, executive producers Maria Menounos, Phil Svitek, and Kevin Undergaro, we would like to thank you for tuning in to Book Circle Online. For more discussion, go to bookcircleonline.com. And if you have comments, questions, or book title suggestions, write us at info at bookcircleonline.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this is Book Circle Online. BCO, join the circle. to come in and talk about your results. And being the idiot that I was, uh, or some people might still say am, <laughs> I said, you know, I'm really busy, so can we just do it on the phone? And she said what you never want to hear, which is, no, he really wants you to come in and talk about it. So I'm like, okay, I'll be right in. So I drove over to Beverly Hills and I sit down and the doctor puts in front of me a piece of paper and it was my lab results. And on one side was the normal level of prolactin, which I'd never heard of. It says, turns out it's a uh, hormone that women secrete to produce breast milk when mm -hmm. they're lactating. Men have trace amounts. Turns out that men have like a level of five. So I take it you're a normally healthy, functioning male. As far as I know. So it's probably about five. Um, mine right now is about five as well. Um, so we're hormonally um, stable yeah um, so the doctor says uh, here's normal five here's yours and I look and he'd highlighted it and it said 1,600 approximately I was like 1,600 and five is normal is that bad and he's like well if you're pregnant and a woman it would probably be like 150 and so began this awakening um i quickly got medication that normalized me and then had surgery to have it removed and this kind of i had this like almost like puberty experience that was incredibly bizarre and exhilarating and scary and just a shock to my system and that's soon after that i started writing because it was such a profound transformation that i went through I mean, do you, did you feel like a different like person just like operating in the world? Yeah, totally. Because 
the thing to understand is I feel like a scientist, Dr. Baker, <laughs> um, the more prolactin you have in your body, the less testosterone. Mm -hmm. It's an inverse relationship. So as I got older, and it turns out that they had diagnosed me as probably... But for me, like, you found out that you were, like, actually, like, you were lactating, right? Well... Or, like, those, that was, like, milk. Yeah. Am I reading into that? Yeah, no, I mean, it's kind of, um... I just think if that was happening to me, I would go to the doctor and be like, yeah. hey... Well, if it was happening today, I would. Yeah. I it was, you know, anyone who's had, first of all, like, I, I have a long history of being the opposite of a hypochondriac where I don't want to acknowledge illness. Um, I'm not really like that anymore, but that's what I was like. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. So my book, in a lot of ways, is sort of a real examination inside the mind of someone who really doesn't want to be sick and thinks they can somehow not think about it and pretend it's not happening. Yeah. I, was, I had so many walls of denial uh, that were built up. And that sort of explains why. Now, the first time that I actually felt like, or I actually had like a discharge, like around my nipple, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's weird to say that, um, was uh, I ran a marathon because I was like, you know, I just need to get healthy and I got to, you know, I'll feel more energy if I just expend more energy. And, and so I ran a marathon. I was living in Washington, D.C. at the time. I was working for ABC News. I was like a desk assistant. And my buddies who I lived in an apartment with, they all were like, let's run the marathon. So we trained, ran the marathon, and uh, my nipples were so sore, like, like so sore. And like rubbing against the shirt and everything. And like, I just was like, I get across the finish line and like my whole body hurts that time. But I remember feeling, oh my God, it hurts so bad. You know, ladies, I know the feeling like when you uh, are a certain time of month, a little swollen, I get it. Um, I literally like had this impulse to like squeeze it out because it was like yeah. pressure, you know, like if you have like a something like a boil or like an ingrown yeah. pimple or something. It's like, you kind of like, oh, I gotta get this. Like, that's what it felt like. And lo and behold, some like milky kind of fluid came out. That's bizarre. Yeah. But, but my... Hi, this is Book Circle Online. I'm Jeffrey Masters, and here I'm with Ken Baker. You know him from E! News, live from E! And today we're talking about his new book called The Late Bloomer. Stay tuned. This is Book Circle Online. Featuring in-depth discussion, insight, news, and commentary on all the world's leading book titles and their authors. And now, Book Circle Online. Hi, Ken. <laughs> Welcome to our show. I say I love the voice intro. Yeah, it's that's like not very, me. Very uh, studious and academic sounding. It's about like three octaves lower than mine. Yeah, but I thought maybe you could do voiceover work. No, 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 no. It's like what I strive to be, but uh, <laughs> it's not. Um, so yeah, we're talking about your new book. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. You're welcome. You read the whole thing. I read the whole thing. Okay, I was kind of hoping you didn't, because now you're going to ask so many questions. I was like, he well, knows too much. Well, if I didn't Knowledge finish it, power. you would still have, like, the tumor, and I'd be asking about that. Yeah, so, no, so a, you know, there's a, there's a happy ending, if you call this happy. Um, yeah, oh my <laughs> no, god. No, it's good. I'm, I'm so blessed, but... Of course. Yeah. It's, a, it's a, like a wild story. Yeah, I, you know, the, the interesting thing about this book is that, uh, full disclosure, I wrote this in 99 and 2000. Okay. And it was published in 2001. Um, and if you didn't hear about it, join the club. Uh, not a lot of people heard about it. And uh, though it was at the time, it got some publicity. I was on uh, Oprah and oh, really? Dateline and stuff. But uh, most people watching this probably weren't alive back then. Uh, I, was, I wasn't. Uh, I was you know, not. I'm very young. I was actually, I wrote this when I was eight years old. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so I'm in my late 20s now. And I read it when I was 18. Yes, of course, of course. Uh, so... Uh, you know, so the book came out then and then it kind of went away, but um, it, it's resurfacing because uh, and we re-released it with a new chapter and some new stuff that I've put in there and uh, a new cover <laughs> that because of the movie. And this is the movie. It's a movie, special movie edition. So I'm here talking about the wild yeah, story and I yeah. never really thought I would be. Oh, funny. Uh, but now I am. And uh, it's pretty cool. <laughs> actually yeah and just for like everyone who doesn't know you had a small tumor we'll give like the brief synopsis and it yeah. caused you to release I don't know if prolactin it was small. Um, how big i guess no tumor it was the size small. of it no well, it was the size of a chestnut which may not sound big like because you hear about people with like grapefruit sized tumors in their stomach but it was a few inches behind my eyes at the base of my brain there's not a lot of room there so it was actually okay. what's considered a macro tumor 
and it was resting on my pituitary gland, which controls all the hormone function in your body. I did not know that. Um, as you re read in the book, when I was told I had this tumor, I and it was on my pituitary gland, I literally was like, is that in my armpit or is that yeah. in my hip? Like, I had no idea. And I know a lot about the pituitary gland now. And um, yeah, it was uh, a pretty huge diagnosis that changed my life for the better. Had you even heard of prolactin before that? No. Okay. Um, so I sit down and this was, uh, I was uh, 27, so it was like a year ago. Uh, no, this is like, when was this? I mean, I guess we're going back to 1997 and I was dying. 97. Yeah. And I was, uh, go to the off a doctor's office cause I was having bad headaches. I had no energy and I had pretty much like no sex drive. And, uh, uh, you know, it was a real miserable time. I was depressed and just down and I stopped playing all the sports and I was an athlete. I had gone to Colgate University on a hockey scholarship and I was didn't even exercise anymore I mean I was like I had no energy whatsoever um and I finally went to a doctor I was in denial for a long time and I go to the doctor in Beverly Hills and I do my physical he takes my blood and blah 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 and I was like yeah I have these really bad sinus headaches and you know he's asking me some questions and I answered them a couple days later I get a call at my office and at the time I worked for People Magazine as a correspondent and I was, you know, I was busy and the nurse calls and was like, uh, Dr. Tribulus would like you to be having it since at least, you know, my early teens, maybe even younger. Wow. But it, I was able to kind of start puberty and, you know, I mean, I wasn't like a little boy, you know, it wasn't like Benjamin Button kind of thing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was like, no, I was, you know, I mean, I was competing at the junior Olympic level in hockey and I was, you know, I had girlfriends and I'd lost my virginity, kind of. It was a disaster. I tell it in the book. Right. It's fun. Uh, not, that's a joke. It was incredibly uh, nerve wracking and awful. But uh, so... I, as I got older, by the time I was in college, I was getting really messed up because my prolactin was creeping up. And, and as I tell in the book, instead of having chapter numbers, I basically say what my prolactin level was as I went through this experience, mm -hmm. unbeknownst to me, because I had no idea what was wrong with me. So when I got that diagnosis at the doctor, I was like, great. I have an answer to why I've been feeling this way and felt like a freak. Yeah. It was like an actual illness. I had thought like maybe I was going crazy, I had hang ups, I was neurotic. No, I was sick biologically. I mean, I'm surprised that you never went to a doctor before to ask. I did. So, well, but, but we have to. Are you saying the New York doctor? Yeah, well, I, you know, I'd been to like psychologists and I'd been to. When I was in college, and this was, I don't hope it's not like this, but when you're a varsity athlete, yeah. they would just be like, oh, come in, hit your knee with a hammer you know, check your heart rate, yeah. whatever, yeah, blood pressure, it's all good. So I was like, I'm healthy. And, uh, but in that really critical time when I kind of, when I was like just starting off, I was in graduate school at Columbia. I was working at newspapers, making no money and really wasn't taking care of myself. I really, I went to a doctor once because I was like, I had really bad sinus headaches. I, and he's just like, oh, here's Claritin. Um, and so I wasn't really telling him that it was like, you know, it's really hard for me to get an erection and like, I really feel messed up. And oh, by the way, I went running the other day and I had like white pus coming out of yeah. my nipples. Didn't mention that. Uh, I was embarrassed, you know, I was kind of like, oh, I don't want to talk about it. And it's weird. Maybe your body's... And I, I get the embarrassment.